Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A marijuana overdose causes the death of a Christian woman in Great Britain. Pot-related driving fatalities have tripled in recent years. And a U.S. Congresswoman makes a fool of herself during a hearing about the Second Amendment. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The British Broadcasting Company, BBC, reports a mother of three, a Christian woman from Dorset, England, died as a result of cannabis poisoning or a marijuana overdose, an inquest has found. Gemma Moss, age 31, from Boscombe in Bournemouth, had moderate to high levels of cannabis toxicity in her system. A post-mortem examination by the coroner found that she died as a result of marijuana overdose. It is thought that she may have suffered a cardiac arrest, which was directly triggered by the drug. This caused a debate between pro-pot and anti-pot groups. For example, the Pro-Cannabis Association Normal UK argued that if she had taken a lethal dose, that asphyxiation would have been the cause of her death and not cardiac arrest. But the Bournemouth coroner, Sheriff Payne, recorded that Miss Moss died as a consequence of the abuse of drugs. The pro-pot group had a spokesman who admitted it was not uncommon to see real herbal cannabis sometimes sprayed with a synthetic high to increase its potency. So he's speculating that maybe this artificial pot is what caused her death. And he also questioned whether there had been other, any other hospital admissions in the area for cannabis induced tachycardia, heart attack, or other pulmonary lung problems. On the anti-pot side of the argument, a man named David Raines, who was of the National Drug Prevention Alliance, said that deaths are actually attributed to cannabis on a rare basis, but they have happened not just in the UK, but in many countries, people have died from using pot. He said, quote, the production in response to consumer demand of ever higher strength cannabis is bound to have some impact as is the increasing use of cannabis distillate, liquid cannabis, which is becoming particularly prevalent in the United States and Canada. The coroner's office confirmed that extensive tests had been conducted on Miss Moss, who died on 28 October last year. Was Miss Moss a Christian? Well, her pastor, Russell White, the leader of Citygate Church in Holdenhurst Road said that Gemma had been a worshiper at his church for about 18 months before her death. She had been baptized last April and she would often bring her young son with her to church. But Pastor White also added that Gemma was lively, full of fun and quickly became committed and well-loved member uh, by many others in church life. So here is, and our thanks to the BBC for that report, here is a Christian woman by all intents and purposes, who is deceived into thinking that she can experiment with a little bit of marijuana and it won't be deadly. And in fact, it killed her. Now the pro-pot group is arguing, oh, it would take you know 20,000 joints before you would be deadly, but actually that's not true. The truth is, even for the first time, if you're a first time user of marijuana, it can be deadly as it was in this case and has been in many other cases. So there is a spirit of deception. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits here. First, there's a spirit of enticement and lust for a high, for pleasure, right? This lust for pleasure is appealing to some people, maybe even appealing to some Christians. 
and it lures you in and it makes you think that, oh, a little bit of pleasure is not gonna be harmful to you, and then it bites you like a viper. And it can be deadly. And sin always has a consequence. The Bible says the consequence of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. So we're discerning a demonic spirit inside of the deceptive people who try to uh, entice you with these pleasures, but we're also in discerning the Holy Spirit of truth and love and compassion that was trying to keep people away from these addictive and perhaps deadly substances. So the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter five, what kind of days do we live in? The Bible gives us a warning, the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, there is a, a demonic spirit of debauchery, and it's not just alcohol, it is, in this case, marijuana. And that debauchery may entice you to have a temporary pleasure, but in the end, it will lead to death. We should reject that and instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Let's pray and be filled with the Spirit of God. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. And we renounce the evil spirit that would entice us into sin. And Father, we invite instead the Holy Spirit of joy and patience and self-control to rule our hearts. Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit as we renounce the demonic and we invite the Spirit of Christ to rule in our hearts. Jesus, forgive us our sins and take over our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, the number of marijuana-related driving fatalities has tripled in the last decade. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending the Constitution? Sign a petition today to defend your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. You know, left-wing crazies go on these shooting sprees, but then the Democrats, like Joseph Biden, are using this as a pretext to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. Can you believe they literally wanna publish the mental health records of military veterans so that they don't pass background checks so they can't exercise their rights when they come home? Senator Harry Reid, the leader, changed the filibuster rules, why? So he could stack the courts with gun-grabbing judges. Here are three of President Obama's nominees, Pillard, Millett, and Wilkins, couldn't get confirmed, but now they're on the court and they're allowing the DC police to fingerprint all law-abiding gun owners? That's not right. Sign a petition today, defend your Second Amendment rights. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Do you care about defending the Second Amendment? Are the Democrats trying to seize your guns? Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein actually believes that stickers on windows and gun-free zones are gonna make your life safer? That's really not true. Uh, we also know that Congresswoman Diane DeGette has confused magazines with bullets and is trying to ban both of those with these stricter gun control laws. But the Colorado sheriffs believe this is unconstitutional. And, and not only that, it's unsafe. A recent Harvard study shows that more guns actually results in less murders and less violence. And look what happened in England. Violence there soared after they banned guns, but here in America, violence dropped by 30% with more gun buying. Why, why is the government the only ones allowed to have billions of rounds of ammunition? I think we should defend your constitutional rights. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from WebMD, a well-respected medical website, which also cites a study by Columbia University professors who report that fatal auto accidents involving marijuana have tripled in the last decade. Currently, one of nine drivers involved in fatal crashes would test positive for marijuana said co-author Dr. Guha Lee, who is the director for the Center for Injury or Epidemi Epidemiology and Prevention at Columbia. Now let me repeat that again. 
one out of every nine fatal car crashes, you can test somebody positive for marijuana. If this trend continues, he says, in five or six years, non-alcohol drugs will overtake alcohol to become the most common substance involved in deaths related to impaired driving. The research team drew its conclusions from crash statistics from six states that routinely perform toxicology tests on drivers involved in fatal car wrecks. The studies were done in California, Hawaii, Illinois, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and West Virginia. And the statistics include more than 23,500 drivers who died and their blood was tested within one hour of their car crash over a 10 year period between 1999 and 2010. Alcohol contributed to about the same percentage of traffic fatalities at the beginning of the decade and at the end of the decade, about 40% of all fatal car crashes are somehow related to alcohol abuse. This is uh, according to Dr. Lee. But drugs, including marijuana, have now played an increasingly prevalent role in fatal crashes, and the trend is going way up. In fact, it's tripled over the last decade, the researchers found. And drugged driving now accounts for up to 28% of traffic deaths in 2010. Well, this is much more than it was, only uh, 16% in 1999, and marijuana proved to be the main drug involved in that increase, contributing to 12% of all fatal crashes in 2010, 12%, which is up from 4% in 1999, marijuana-related driving fatalities. In other words, it went from 4% up to 12%, it's tripled. The study also notes that if people combine alcohol and pot, their likelihood of being involved in a fatal car crash increases even more. Well, that's the news and our thanks to WebMD and Columbia University for providing that research. You know, these are the kinds of stories that you're not gonna get on other TV shows. And that's why we need you to stand with us and partner with us at PrayInJesusName.org. Help us to bring these kinds of critical pieces of information to the public debate. Did you see this news report? I mean, this is documented medical research. Did you see it on ABC News, NBC News, CBS News, even Fox News? Well, maybe you might've seen it on Fox News, I don't know. But I'm telling you, we need your support to bring you these kinds of facts and to even up the debate, at least present the other side of the story. There's so much uh, corruption in America now saying, oh, pot's fine, you know, marijuana, we can have that and there are no consequences. No, it's deadly. It kills people, thousands of people every year from marijuana related traffic fatalities. The Bible, again, describes this condition that we live in. The days are evil, it says in Ephesians 5. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray about this. Let's continue to pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name that you would bring an end to the tragedy. I mean, it's one thing if people take their own lives in their hands, but when they're out there with a car on the road, they're putting everybody's life in danger. Father, how many innocent people were killed as a result of those fatalities? People who were not even involved in drugs, not even involved in alcohol abuse, but when they met that abuser head on in a car crash, it wasn't their fault, but they had to pay the price for somebody else's sin. And Father, as a society, we are tired of paying the price for somebody else's sin. Father, instead, let there be justice. Let every person be responsible for themselves and be accountable. And Father, let the law protect the rest of us from the abusers and those who would be foolish and think that their actions are never gonna harm anybody. That it's just a victimless crime, no. There are victims and Father, we pray that you would raise the awareness, that you would empower the government with courage to protect its citizens. Father, we pray this blessing on our elected officials. We pray that you would bless them with wisdom in Jesus' name, amen. When we come back, 
a congresswoman from Colorado is debating gun rights, the second amendment. And she gets a little confused and actually makes a fool of herself. Stay right uh, here. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending the Constitution? Sign a petition today to defend your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. You know, left-wing crazies go on these shooting sprees, but then the Democrats, like Joseph Biden, are using this as a pretext to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. Can you believe they literally want to publish the mental health records of military veterans so that they don't pass background checks so they can't exercise their rights when they come home? Senator Harry Reid, the leader, changed the filibuster rules, why? So he could stack the courts with gun-grabbing judges. Here are three of President Obama's nominees, Pillard, Millett, and Wilkins, couldn't get confirmed, but now they're on the court and they're allowing the DC police to fingerprint all law-abiding gun owners? That's not right. Sign a petition today, defend your Second Amendment rights. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Do you care about defending the Second Amendment? Are the Democrats trying to seize your guns? Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein actually believes that stickers on windows and gun-free zones are gonna make your life safer? That's really not true. Uh, we also know that Congresswoman Diane DeGette has confused magazines with bullets and is trying to ban both of those with these stricter gun control laws. But the Colorado sheriffs believe this is unconstitutional. And, and not only that, it's unsafe. A recent Harvard study shows that more guns actually results in less murders and less violence. And look what happened in England. Violence there soared after they banned guns, but here in America, violence dropped by 30% with more gun buying. Why, why is the government the only ones allowed to have billions of rounds of ammunition? I think we should defend your constitutional rights. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps, a United States Congresswoman from Colorado, Democrat Diane DeJet got confused the other day about the difference between bullets and magazines in the middle of a debate about the Second Amendment, when she actually dared to claim that if law-abiding people shoot enough magazines that they would run out of magazines. Failing to make the connection that magazines actually hold bullets and you can refill the magazine with, with new bullets. Well, there, her debate came in a legislative hearing after Democrats have passed laws in Colorado limiting the manufacture or sale of gun magazines that hold more than 15 rounds of ammunition. Although her gaffe revealed how little the Congresswoman actually knows about guns that she is trying to ban, she actually thinks that bullets and magazines are the same thing, the real lesson here is that Democrats are actually trying to ban the use of guns by law abiding citizens. They're trying to ban the magazines, they're trying to ban the bullets, they're trying to ban your right to defend yourself, your second amendment right to keep and bear arms. And they are now hostile and openly stand as domestic enemies of the constitution, particularly the second amendment. Let's now watch a video clip of her testimony. Representative Deget, this is a question about high capacity magazine bans. Um, I wonder, it's a two part question. I wonder if you'll first talk about the political viability of um, a ban in Congress. There's a measure pending. Um, and if you'll also talk about the, the efficacy of um, banning the manufacture and sale going forward when there's approximately 40 million of them in circulation. I have uh, good reason to believe that we can pass a number of key provisions of legislation through the House, including the magazine ban, the background checks, banning straw purchases, in addition to some, some other issues around mental health and, and other issues. So I do think that we can pass those. And, and just br very briefly to your last question, what's the efficacy of, pa of banning 
these magazine clips. I will tell you, these, these, this is, these are um, ammunition. They're bullets. So the people who have those now, they're going to shoot them. And so if you ban, if you ban them in the future, the number of these high-capacity magazines is going to decrease dramatically over time because the bullets will have been shot and there won't be any more available. Let's just read some of the words that she said here. These are her words, not my words. I'm just gonna quote the Congresswoman. She said, talking about magazines, she says, these are ammunitions, they're bullets. So the people who have those now, they're gonna shoot them. So if you ban them in the future, the number of these high capacity magazines is going to decrease dramatically over time because the bullets will have been shot and there won't be any more available. Are you kidding? Have you ever heard of reloading your magazine? Apparently she's not. You know, Congresswoman, I hope somebody from your staff is watching this. I invite you to come to the gun range with me. We'll give you a little lesson on the difference between bullets and magazines. Maybe we'll shoot a few rounds together. Maybe you'll at least have the education before you go banning law abiding citizens from having magazines. Just to clarify, a magazine is not a bullet. A magazine cannot be fired. A magazine is not ammunition. It's just a cartridge that holds the ammunition. Well, her gun grabbing laws and initiatives violate the constitution. Even a majority now, almost all of the Colorado sheriffs agree. And we've talked on this story about Colorado Sheriff John Cook, who is leading the charge and taking a stand against these gun grabbing laws. And they're unenforceable under Colorado law because also the Colorado constitution protects your right to keep and bear arms and your rights shall not be infringed in any way. Not only is it unconstitutional, but it's deadly. What the Congresswoman is proposing is to put law abiding citizens in more danger because when we cannot protect ourselves, then only the criminals have the guns, only the criminals have the magazines and the bullets. Her real goal is to ban the bullets themselves. And if she can ban the bullets, then she can take away our right to keep and bear arms. By the way, the US Supreme Court has already ruled it's illegal to ban the ammunition because that effectively better, violates your right to have arms, to keep and bear arms. And I think this also, let's just look at a scripture here from Proverbs chapter 14. And maybe she thinks she's compassionate, she thinks she's helping somebody. Honestly, I don't think she's that dumb. I think she is being intentional about this and her goal is not compassionate, her goal is disarmament. The Bible says that leads to death. Proverbs 14, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. And her failed policies are now gonna cause more deaths and more shootings by left-wing nuts like we had in Arapaho, like we had in uh, the, the high school in Columbine. Uh, listen, we need to be able to protect our children, and the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name that you will give us liberty to protect our families, to protect ourselves, to stand against the devil who gets inside of some people and these left-wing crazies at the uh, Aurora Movie Theater, the Arapahoe High School, the Columbine High School, right here in Colorado, Father, uh, when they are full of the devil and they come after us with their murderous intentions, let us protect ourselves. And God, stop the government from uh, putting us in harm's way. When the government is not helpful to us, if they can't, can't respond to prevent these things, at least let them stay out of the way. First do no harm, give us the freedom to protect ourselves. We can take care of ourselves. As law abiding citizens, we know how to protect our wives and children. Father, I ask that you would bless us with a government who will recognize our right to do that and give us that freedom and defend the constitution. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take one more short break. When we come back, we'll talk about tomorrow's show. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com 
Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not gonna believe this. Even as we are recording this TV show in our studio, we actually, we smell marijuana coming from the next door house. It's, it's supposed to be illegal. You're supposed to only, in Colorado, you're only allowed to have it in your house, but now it's coming through the ventilation system. Somebody outside of this studio is smoking marijuana. And I hope, I hope I'm not allergic, my gosh. I'm just saying, uh, you can't get away from it, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want this coming to your state but do what you can to help us report on these issues. The Bible says in Luke chapter six, give and it will be given to you. So please donate today. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. What is that smell? Mr. Producer, take us to commercial. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. 